So now, so far what we have done is, uh, we have uh, seen the influence of neurons on the, or what image patches cause a neuron to fire. Then we have visualized the weights. So neurons have been visualized, weights have been visualized. Then we have done some occlusion experiments on the input image. Now we will take this further and we are interested in seeing that what pixels in the image actually help in the output or in any neuron in the intermediate layers and we will find out some principal way of finding this influence right and we are going to use back propagation that means we are going to use gradients okay. So we can think of an image as an m cross n input uh, going from x0, x1 all the way up to x m cross n nothing great about that and we are interested in finding the influence of each of these inputs on a given neuron. Now what is one way of computing influence that you have learned in this course? What is the hero of this course? Gradients, right. So gradients tell you the influence. So now can you tell me if I want to compute what is the influence of this neuron or, or this input on this neuron, what would you do? Do Hj by do Xi, but can you compute that? How will you compute that? How do you compute the gradient with respect to the input? We have always stopped at the last hidden layer and the weights before that. So how will we do that? How will you do this? Okay, this is a trick question, just a hint. Is there a restriction on the chain rule or can you do it? You can just keep adding links to the chain, right? So what is so difficult about that? You already know how to compute the gradients till this point. And in fact, you also know how to compute the gradients till this point. And what is stopping you from doing it up to this point? What if I just call this h instead of x, then you would not have a problem, right? And actually we call it h, right, we call it h0. You can do it, right, it is straightforward. So let us see, if I want to compute dou hj by dou xi, I can see that if the, if dou hj by dou xi is 0, that means this pixel has 0 input on the neuron. If it is large, then it has a high influence, if it is small, then it has a low influence, right. So this is how I will see whether a pixel has an influence on certain neurons in the, uh, in some of the hidden layers and this is not restricted to convolutional neural networks as you can see. I am just actually treating it like a feed forward neural network with sparse connections, okay. So we could just compute these partial derivatives and visualize this gradient itself as an image. So what do I mean by that is, I am going to compute dou hi by dou x0, dou hi by dou x1 all the way up to dou hi by dou x mn, right. So I am going to compute these m cross n entities and I can just visualize this as an image. Now what do you expect this image to look like? If 0 represents grey colour, what do you expect this image to largely look like? What would you actually hope for? This image should be largely grey because most of the input pixels should not be influencing a given pixel in the hidden layer, right? That pixel should influence by only a small number of pixels so that we can say that this is the patch which causes it to fire and not that every pixel in the input is causing it to fire because that is meaningless, right? that does not that is not something that we care about. How many of you get this? Please raise your hands. So I'll just repeat it. If a pixel fires for every pixel, uh, if a neuron in the hidden layer is influenced by all the pixels in the input, that means it's not really discriminating. It's not really specialized, right? We want neurons which fire only for certain patches in the input, so that we know that this neuron is responsible for this kind of a pattern. Okay. So if I plot this as an image, I would want most of these entries to be close to zero, right? Because I want the influence to be zero. Okay. Now the question is how do we compute these gradients? So we will just treat them as a feed forward neural network. We already know how to do back propagation across these roots and we just need to add one more term to the chain, right. So I will just show you what we will do here. So I am interested in dou h32 by dou x2. So I will observe that there are four paths which go from h32 to x2 or rather from x2 to h32. So I'll just sum up the gradients along these four paths, right? And if I solve it, I'll just be left with this. Okay? So that's how I'll visualize. So this is very simple. We have done a lot of gradients in class, so you can just go back and check this, and it should work out well. Okay? So uh, so you can just see this, and this way we can just compute the gradients for all the input pixels. And now I'm going to plot it as an image, and this is what my image looks like. Do you see what is happening here? 
it's all very murky, right? Most of it is gray. That's fine. We expected it. But there's nothing really standing out, right? Even in this patch where you have some non-gray pixels, it's almost like the entire cat region is appearing as non-gray. The influences are not coming out to be very sharp. We would have wanted something like only the eye pixels cause some neuron to fire or only the ear pixels cause some neuron to fire and that is not really happening. Okay. So, it does not produce very sharp influences. So, someone proposed something known as guided back propagation which we are going to see next and that helps you to better understand the influence of the input pixels. <laughs>